Dear students, welcome to GC Advanced Level History by Sir Moses. Today we are going to treat a particular topic and the topic is slave trade in West Africa in the 19th century. Oh my God, let us discover how the Europeans treated the Africans as slaves. Let us discover all these horrible pictures that made the trade to an extent that they themselves they saw it necessary to abolish the trade. This lesson is provided to you by Sir Moses. General introduction. What do you understand by the term slave? As you can see in the picture, as you can see in the various picture, yeah, right? Uh, you see some uh, black Africans, you see some African world trained, trained. So slave trade refers to the traffic in human beings that was practiced from the 15th to the 19th century. The trade was mostly practiced by the Europeans and the Arab traders. Good. Take note that Africa served as the main source of slaves to America, Europe, Saudi Arabia, and Asia. Slave trade was a tradition before the coming of the Europeans to Africa. Now, according to African tradition, slave trade was a means of getting rid of village criminals and social unwanted citizens. Slaves were equally captured or acquired through right and welfare. The existence of this local trade provided a suitable ground for the development of international trade across North Africa and the Atlantic Ocean. With the arrival of the Europeans in the 15th century, the trade was transformed from a local to an international trade with Africa acting as a main source. Look at the picture very well. You find all the Africans, slaves, world chain, prepared to be carried to the new world or to America, where they were going to work in European plantations. You have the transatlantic slave trade. What was there for the transatlantic slave trade? Those from the word transatlantic, transatlantic, it was trade across the Atlantic Ocean. Now, unlike the Sahara slave trade, which was mainly between West and North Africa, passing across the Sahara Desert, the transatlantic slave trade was trade that occurred across the Atlantic Ocean and took place among three continents, namely Africa, America, and Europe. Africa acted as a main source of slaves. Now, the trade was introduced by Europeans who needed laborers to work in their plantation in America. The transatlantic slave trade therefore refers to the transportations of Africans to work in European plantation in America. The trade reached its peak during the 17th and 18th century when other European countries like Britain, Holland, France, Sweden, and Denmark became involved. Became involved. Good. Just from the word transatlantic, just look at the picture. Look at the picture, look at the first picture here, and look at the second picture here where chains were trained by Europeans and they were being carried now uh, from the Atlantic Ocean to the New World and carried now to work in their plantations in Europe and America. You have the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade. The trade was so horrible to the extent that European powers, especially Britain, said, no, 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 we need to abolish this form of trade or this form of trade, right? Now, take note that slave trade drew a lot of sympathy, even from those who oppose it, like you have bad love me, right? The trade was largely criticized as inhuman by personality, Christian churches, missionary bodies, countries, and humanitarians. Take note that the first European country who stood for the abolition or championed the abolition of the trade was against slavery and slave trade was Britain. Now, let's also examine the factors that favor the abolition of the slave trade in West Africa. Reasons for the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade. Jeff, dear candidate, as you can see from the picture, the trade was so bad to an extent that Britain said, no, we need to abolish this trade. First, we are starting with the political reason, right? And the first political reason was the achievement of independence by the British American colonies. Now, take note that humanitarians like William W. Bufford drew inspiration from the idea of American war in 1775. Not only the British humanitarians, even the Americans. And for example, according to the American, all men are born free and equal. 
With the loss of America in 1783, many English business ordered to compensate for the loss. Hence, the Easter preferred to scramble over Africa to, to acquire territory. Then you have the French Revolution. Now, the French Revolution with its slogan like liberty, equality, and fraternity contributed to the abolition of slave trade. Through this slogan, new ideas were strengthened and this increased popular agitation, thus leading to the abolition of the trade. You have the role of philosophers. Philosophers like Thomas Paine, right, published books on liberty and equality of all men. All this stress on, all this, their, their thoughts stress on liberty. So their thoughts and in their thoughts and idea influence public opinions, both in Europe and in America for the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade. You have the influence of some West African chiefs. Most West African chiefs and king protested against the slave trade. For instance, king, the king of Congo wrote a letter to the king requesting him, to the Portuguese king requesting him to stop his slave trade or slave traders from buying slaves in his kingdom. Not only the king of Congo, but you have also the king of Daomi who met, who met similar movement and protested against the British government from buying or stopping the British from buying slaves in his kingdom. Then you have the Berlin West African Conference of 1884. This was a conference organized by Otto von Bismarck, the German chancellor and the, uh, the, the French prime minister Julius Ferry. And after the Berlin West African Conference, a document was brought out known as the Berlin Act. And one of the, one of the uh, content of the Berlin Act was that each European power having territory in Africa must embark in the complete abolition of, of slave trade. So take note that one of the decisions of this Berlin Act was the abolition of slavery and slave trade in all its form. The conference gave European colo colonialists the right to penetrate into the interior so that they could fight against the trade that was still practiced in the continent. You have the role of the British naval squandle. The British set up naval squandle in West Africa, Sierra Leone, and Fernando Po. The role of the British naval squandle was to arrest ships which were still carrying slaves from Africa to Europe. To enforce the role of the naval squandle, Britain signed anti slave trade treaties with other nations. After examining the political factor that led to the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade, we move now to examine economic reason. And the first economic reason that led to the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade or slave trade in West Africa was the advent of the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution was a period whereby goods produced by hands were now produced by machine. Now, this revolution which began in Britain later spread to other parts of Europe. With the advent of the revolution or the Industrial Revolution, Tropical products were needed as raw materials to keep the machine working. It was later discovered that these raw materials were found in Africa, and as such, slave trade had to be abolished. Also, there was a need for new and expanding market to absorb the product of the machines. The Industrial Revolution acquires, required that Africans, rather than being exported to the Americans, should remain and provide raw materials and market require for the industries. Now, the Industrial Revolution made European slave dealers and investors to realize that it was more profitable opening plantation in Africa and involving African labor, which was cheaper than transporting them to work in plantations in Europe. You have the decline in sugar production in the West India was another economic reason that influenced the abolition of slave trade in West Africa. The British West Indian plantation, which produced sugar for all of Europe and America, began to produce cheap sugar, thereby destroying the British monopoly of sugar production in Europe. As the production of British sugar plantation dropped due to low demand, thousands of slaves were abandoned and died of starvation. This rendered slave to it not useful again, hence its abolition. You have the introduction of legitimate trade. 
The introduction of legitimate trade, agriculture and legitimate trade in West Africa influenced the abolition of slave trade. Europeans started demanding raw materials like palm oil, ivory, and rubber as substitute to slaves. Christian missionaries in West Africa introduced new fruits like mango, avocado, and popo. The introduction of legitimate goods by Europeans, such as clothes, whiskey, drinks, and kitchen uses, made African slave dealers to gradually abandon the slave trade. Humanitarian reason. Now, take note that not only uh, economic and political factors were responsible, you also had humanitarians who embark on the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade. Now, the humanitarians who championed the abolition of slave trade were British citizens like William Reed Bafford, Gavin Shepp, Richard Botta, and Morgan Godwin. They condemned the slave trade on the ground that it failed to respect human dignity and personality. Apart from that, they gather information about the misery of slaves and expose it, expose its negative, uh, negative image and the humanizing nature. For example, Richard Botta, in his book titled Christian Dictionary, founded in 1673, condemned the slave hunters as a common enemies of mankind. Gavin Shipp, another abolitionist, personally enforced the struggle for the abolition of the slave trade. Gavin Shipp took up a case of James Somerset, a runaway slave from the West Indian. He agreed or defended John, uh, Somerset in a way that Chief Justice Manfred in 1772 declared that slavery were contrary to the laws in Britain. He made slave residents in Britain free. William Wayne Baffert on his part used his position in, in, in the parliament to press for the passing of anti-slavery and slave trade laws in the British parliament. For example, the 1807 and 1883-33 bills. Good. Dear students, have you ever heard about St. Austin? If you have never heard about St. Austin, I would like you to listen more about St. Austin, right? What is St. Austin, please? St. Austin Medical Institution is an institution that is well ready to receive those who are interested to continue in the medical, those who, are, those who want to continue in the medical world, uh, field. Now, ask yourself this question. What will, you, what will I do or go for? For those of you who would like to continue in a medical field and need where to study medicine in Cameroon, St. Austin Medical Balingua Higher Institute, Institute situated in Yaoundé, Juvence, is the best place for you people. Don't wait till it gets late, please. St. Austin, yeah, as you can see in the picture, have modern equip, equipped uh, equipment in their various uh, uh, hospitals and laboratory where students carry out their practicals before going in for internship. So if you are interested to continue to, to continue your studies in the medical field and you need a particular place where to study medicine, I will advise you, dear student, to take for Stan Austin. It's a very serious medical institute which prepares students Right, which prepares to them in the right way for me medicines in Cameroon, in, or in the medical field in Cameroon. This goes with the 2035 emergency plan planned by the President of the Republic, President Paul Bia. Please be very attentive and let us continue with our study. You have the religious reason. Now, one of the religious, we are talking about the religious reason. Take note that religious bodies like the Anglican, right, the Methodist, right, the Baptist and the Catholic preach and condemn the inhuman trait. They argue that slavery was a social evil because it was against the divine law that all men are God's creation. Also, missionaries like Thomas Clarkson were also against the trait and condemned it on ground that it was a sin against God. Through the, preaching of, through the preaching of their missionary, they convicted people's opinion in Europe and America against the evil trade. Missionaries were also sent to Africa to fight against the evil trade. They persuaded the African chief to abandon the slave trade in favor of legitimate trade in, in goods. As you can see by the picture, the three pictures here, you see that the trade was dehumanized, it was inhuman to an extent that the British said, no, it's enough, enough, let us abandon this form of trade. 
how slave trade was abolished or measure used in the abolition of slave trade. Dear candidate, we are done. We are done with reason for the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade. We are now entering to examine how slave trade was abolished or measure used in the abolition of slave trade. Good. It is the credit of Great Britain that she played leading role in the suppression of slave trade and slavery in her empire in Europe and West Africa. The following measures were adopted in the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade or slave trade in West Africa. First, you have the creation of anti-slavery and slave trade association by British humanitarians. Humanitarians such as William Will Bufford, Gavin Shape, right? right? As a result of the evil in slave trade, they form anti-slavery and slave trade association, like the society for like the associate, like the society for the abolition of slave trade and the anti-slave trade committee. The anti-slave trade committee was formed by Gavin Shep. William Wee Bafford also was also the representative and the spokesman of the anti-slave movement in the British Parliament for so many years. This association influenced the British government and public opinion against the slave trade by publishing pamphlets exposing the error of the trade. Hence, it led to the abolition. You have the passing of anti-slavery and slave trade law. The first major success of the dehumanized or the first success of the humanitarians in their effort to abolish the slave trade took place in 1772. In that, in that year, Owing to the effort of Gavin Shape in the case of a runaway slave, James Somerset, the Lord, Just, Lord Chief Justice Manfred gave his famous decision that any slave, any slave who set his feet on England's soil was free. Also, the British Parliament, through the influence of William Wee Bafford, enacted anti-slave trade laws like the 1871, which made the slave trade illegal to the British subject, and the 1833 law that abolished slavery in the British empire. You have diplomatic pressure. Denmark outlawed the slave trade for its subject in 1804 and Britain in 1807. Britain, by its diplomatic pressure, persuaded other European powers to declare the slave trade illeg illegal for their citizens. The USA did so in 1807, Sweden in 1833. Holland in 1814, France in 1815, Spain in 1816, and Portugal in 1817. You have signing of anti-slave trade treaties was another measure. Britain negotiated two important anti-slave trade treaties with other nations. The first was the reciprocal search treaty in 1817 with Spain and Portugal. By this treaty, British Navy ship had the right to stop and search own naval ship suspected of carrying slaves. In return, their own naval ship could stop and search British ship. Ship caught with slaves on board were arrested. Another treaty signed by Britain was the Equipment Treaty. Was the Equipment Treaty. This treaty provided that ship found with slave equipment like handcuffs, right, and change could be arrested. This treaty were, were signed by Spain in 1835, Portugal in 1842, and USA in 1862. As a result of this treaty, two about two treaties, about 1287 ships, about 1287 ships were captured. And, be, and between 1825 and 1865, about 130,000 slaves were liberated. The British government also signed anti-slave trade treaties with African kings such as Asante, Fante, and Calabar, right? Now we move now to payment of compensation in cash and kind. The British government paid compensation in cash and kind to some West African kings and chiefs, as well as some Europeans in their effort to secure their respect for the abolitionist treaties and for loss incurred by the abolition. For instance, the King of Boni was given £3,000 per year as compensation for the abolition of the slave trade in his kingdom. You have the establishment of the naval squandle. In the crusade against the slave trade along the coast of West Africa of the British, the British Navy played a, a very big or important role. The warship of the British Navy patrolled the West African coast and used force to stop the trade. To ensure the effectiveness of the patrol, 
the British Navy established local bases in Freetown and the island of Fernando Po, where the warship carried out its operations. You have the foundering of slave settlement. The founding of Sierra Leone and Liberia by Britain and America, respectively, for the liberated slave was another measure in the abolition of slave trade. Sierra Leone was a settlement for free slaves based for the British Navy and for the Court of Miscommission and also an also center for missionary activities in the interior of Africa. The founding of these two towns acted as one of the last nails that were hammed on the coffin of the abolition of the slave trade. You have the introduction of legitimate trade in an attempt to substitute the slave trade. Britain introduced legitimate trade, which was the exchange of European manufactured goods for African raw materials. European doors encouraged the growth of tropical crops such as palm oil, rubber, than slave in exchange for manufactured goods. Then you have the last European colonization of West Africa. This cut off the supply of slaves from its source and the evil traffic died out. In fact, European occupying power negotiated anti-slave trade treaties with the chief of the area of West Africa. Under their influence, they even adopted as a duty in the Berlin West African Conference, a duty to abolish the slave trade in their territory. Difficulties encountered in the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade. You had the attitude of the West African kings and chiefs. The Atlantic slave trade would have never lasted for so long without the activities and willing cooperation of African chief and the coastal people. They resisted the abolition with the slave dealers and even helped avoid being captured by the slave, by the British Navy officer by showing them places to write. This was because they never wanted to lose the huge profit they were making from the trade so that they wanted it to continue. You have the ineffectiveness of the anti-slave trade treaties. The such treaty was largely ineffective because only ships on which slaves were found could be seized. For this reason, slave traders at times threw overboard their slaves when they were, uh, uh, they were at a point of being caught by the British. You have the vastness of the African coast. You have the vastness of the African coast. Hello? Yes, hello? Good afternoon. Please, I'm in class. You cannot be calling me like that when I'm in class. You, are, you just made me stop a very, an important class because you want to call me. Stop. Oh, man, it's a purpose. 